Guys, what's going on? My name is Miriam and I'm a figurative painter based in the United States. By figurative, I mean I love to paint life, like people, animals, nature, all in representational manner, so in a way that we see them with our human eye. Um, I do that out of deep connection to people and the world. Um, I love to sit down and get to know my subject matter, whether it's a dog, a cat. Uh, I do prefer painting people, so when I paint a person, um, I really love to get to know them so that I can bring out the essence in the painting and tell the story behind the sitter. My journey as an artist began when I was really little and uh, I always traveled with my family and we moved from country to country, city to city and uh, the difficult thing was always to uh, uh, come to a new school and uh, connect with the students there because people had different cultures, new cliques and even sometimes the language was a barrier so through that I found comfort in art and mathematics and I have to tell you that uh, connecting with others was very, very rough for me. But I can say that when I would walk into a classroom, maybe I wasn't able to ask the teacher on where is the bathroom? Can I get a you know, hall pass? All of these things were like uh, so difficult for me because I didn't know the language. Uh, but one thing I was able to do was to sit down at a table full of kids to whip out my pencil, whip out a notebook and start sketching and uh, next thing you know um, all of us on this round table are drawing, you know when I was with girls we would be drawing uh, different fashion models with cool outfits and uh, yeah all of a sudden we're all smiling, mingling, uh, talking different languages but uh, understanding each other because art and mathematics, it's a universal uh, language of communication. Now, there are two parts about me, and they are that when I create my art, um, my vision and my passion for it, that's the art behind it. And the second one, it's the engineering side. So I have an entire process, a step-by-step -step process, and how to create and make my vision come to life. And that is very planned, engineered, and mathematical. And so uh, these two things, the art and the engineering side, um, interwine in my artwork and help me produce and uh, create that art piece. All right, let's talk about my process. Before we do so, um, let's back up a little bit. I just want to talk first about my goals in my artwork because that is what my process evolves around. Um, so my end goal, of course, is for a viewer to uh, approach my work and uh, feel like it's alive, it's breathing, it's living, and uh, for them to feel some sort of a connection to it. Now, the challenge is how, how do I make that happen and uh, if you're looking a bit more from an engineered standpoint um, you have a two-dimensional surface in front of you and uh, we're either going to do a drawing or a painting so uh, we're either working on black and white scale and uh, you know with a limited value range because for example if you're drawing with a pencil um, you cannot achieve as many value gradations as what our eye sees or even if we're painting with color you know we, we do not have so much color out there right now that mimics how much our eye sees now that is a challenge and uh, with that there has been so many beautiful paintings created so much inspiration where um, you approach and you just feel like it's so real in the moment and alive and uh, how is it possible? Well, what a lot of these artists do is uh, they work and create harmony and they create this illusion to the viewer and that is all based on hierarch hierarchy 
and uh, being able to assemble the data on you know the two-dimensional surface in a way that reads well to the person viewing it so for example when we're talking about value let's say i'm throwing things out there let's say our eye can see thousands of gradations but with a graphite pencil we can only achieve maybe a scale of five so what do you do you have to start compressing values so uh, we're still building an accurate relationship of what our eye sees, but uh, we have to compress. So we have to compress maybe values on a darker scale, on a lighter scale. And this is where you come in as an artist and have to start making decisions. And based on the decisions that you make, you're uh, showing a, a mood, you're showing um, a different type of composition, you're telling a story. And uh, that's really the beauty of it all as a realist artist. You know, there's a huge misconception that, uh, you know, an artist, uh, a figurative artist is just copying what they see in front of them. And that's not true because you have to make a decision. You have to create an illusion, something that's believable to the viewer. And uh, you are highly limited, but by what is available and uh, each artist is making their own unique decision and based off of that something beautiful is created all right now let's talk about my process so to any of you who are new to classical approach to drawing and painting this might come as a surprise to create the artwork it's like building a house there are stages and each stage uh, solves a problem or problems and once you're done resolving them, you move on to the next, and at the end you have a finished piece that's uh, believable and feels and looks alive. So why do we do those stages again? Because uh, you want to have a consistent body of work and uh, you want to break down the complexity. All right, so step one in my process, inspiration. So to start a piece, you know, you have to feel inspired and connected. And what I love about portraits is just a simplicity and a focus on a person because each person is unique and different personality, uh, different expression. And so um, you don't need to go get super fancy with what you do, but there is a, a lot of little elements that are very important in this work. So it is a must to be inspired because ha being inspired you know no matter uh, what brings you that inspiration is what will lead you into the next step um, getting a good reference to get a good reference that is step two you have to have an inspiration and vision so that you can clearly understand what it is you're trying to capture um, so as an example i recently com completed um, a, a piece uh, of a friend of mine, her name is Rahel. Um, I was inspired to do something spiritual and she happens to be a very spiritual person, beautiful, young, and uh, very nice. And so um, I had this vision to do um, a portrait of her being in the moment and uh, doing a prayer. So that was my inspiration and uh, for the step two, um, I had to gather a reference with her and uh, that was uh, an interesting challenge because I had to get the reference I had four different photo shoots uh, the reason behind that is in the beginning um, I wasn't exactly sure of what I wanted to do and uh, which way I wanted to go and uh, that is also goes back to where I say, I, I tell you that it's important to follow these steps. So I actually had to reverse engineer a little bit because I was not clear on my inspiration. And so my vision only evolved and happened at our third photo shoot uh, when I got to know Rahul a lot better as a person and to see who she really is. And uh, we became more comfortable with each other. And so, uh, I gather the reference by doing photo shoots 
Uh, I think I told you already we did four. And uh, in the beginning, um, you know, we had to warm up to each other a little bit and there was that element of a camera being behind us and so it puts pressure on a model. It makes them feel like they need to perform, like they need to deliver something and so um, you don't feel us in the moment when this happens. So on our fourth photo shoot, I finally asked her to bring an object of sentimental value and it was her prayer book. And uh, as we set up, it just happened to be that the space we were using was white and she brought this beautiful, um, uh, almost white dress with a, a little bit of a fluorescent like green to it, uh, a tint of green. Um, it was just so beautiful and it complemented her skin tone so well. And the whole thing was just so uplifting and white. Um, and then there were the pop of blue the prayer book was blue and she wore these beautiful blue earrings and uh, you know all of a sudden the, the, the inspiration and vision came together. Um, I asked her to recite her prayers and while she was reciting these prayers um, I took a bunch of photos and finally I was able uh, to get a beautiful reference. <music> Step three is uh, doing studies. So as an artist, uh, it's a rookie mistake. Something that I've done a lot before was getting super excited and just wanting to jump into that painting. But when you're creating something complex, um, you know, you have to think through and ahead and really evaluate something before you uh, get into it because these kind of portraits, they take time. They can take a month, three months, half a year. And so for me, I love to be able to just make sure that um, every part of the drawing or painting is accountable for and thought through. Um, so this is why it's important to do studies. So I, I took some beautiful reference photos, maybe 500 of them. And as I was going through, uh, there's different elements that I liked in different photos, but there wasn't one perfect one. Um, so to create that reference, um, I uh, did a composite almost of uh, five different photos because in one photo I like the hands more and the other the hair looked better and another one uh, the earring you could see that so um, I kind of put all these elements together into um, one drawing and made sure that anatomically things were placed correctly uh, because uh, the perspective was a bit different from photo to photo and so once that composite was done uh, I did some studies. So I took that composite of photos and I drew out sketches. Now I did that because things always look very believable in photo. I feel like as viewers, when we see a photo, we automatically believe what we're seeing because it's a photo. Although for example, if you look at a photo in your cell phone, uh, it's completely like skewed from the way that our human eyes sees, you know, this, like a lot of distortions, but we do believe what we're seeing. So it's important to take this composite of photos and just create a sketch by hand and see how, how does this drawing feel? Does it feel good? And also in the meantime, you're studying the anatomy and really just re-evaluating the whole drawing. and you know, giving focus to each section to really feel like, okay, is this what I'm going to do or not? And then um, for the other part of the study, uh, when you're creating a painting, it's important to create the color palette. So for me, the less colors um, that I can get away with creating something real, the better. I love things to be simple and clean, so I like... Uh, limited palettes and so I will create a few color studies and color studies are all about just uh, you know putting in colored dots on a high level you're not going in there and detailing and you know going for accuracy of proportion and so I create uh, a few color studies while also 
figure out the color palette as I work on these color studies. So uh, that is for the studies part. And a lot of times if it's a commission, uh, this is the part where you show it to your client and uh, they might choose which color study they like more or they might uh, you know, look at the sketch and the drawing and tell you, yeah, I, I love I love the study, please continue, or no, I would like to adjust something, so, so yeah, so that's as far as studies. Alright, so now that we have a, a solid um, concept going on here and the client is happy, and also um, usually I'll exhaust my resources, so I have a favorite past instructor that I go to and I always get a second opinion from him uh, just because uh, he does amazing work and I aspire to that. So once all of that is settled and uh, I feel comfortable starting, I go into my studio and put in the hours needed. So next step is uh, to create the artwork. So how do we do that? So for my painting, um, I start with a transferring my drawing. The reason I do that is because I want to keep the, the canvas as clean as I can and also just preserve its quality. So once I have a solid drawing with the accurate proportions, um, I transfer the drawing on my panel or canvas and uh, I'm ready to paint. Once my transfer is done, I'll do an underpainting um, I like to have some sort of a value impression going on on my canvas before I go into color. Uh, first of all, it's just a cheaper pigment to work with and uh, it helps the actual paint stick on top of it. And uh, I like to, uh, after having an accurate drawing transferred, I like to resolve my uh, value harmony in the underpainting as well. I, I build from big to little, so I'll uh, start putting in the general information, the general colors, and as I'm getting closer to completing the painting, I start uh, tightening the details and uh, correcting some proportional issues and just harmonizing everything. For me, a complete painting is when there is harmony of color and harmony of values. And so then it just feels right and it looks real. And uh, you know, the simple part of uh, knowing that your portrait is done is that it looks like that person. It feels like that person. So. That is me, and I think uh, as far as uh, my studio hours, that is the uh, longest part of my process. Once I feel like the painting is 90% uh, there, and most of my work is done, uh, I'll reach out to the client and get their feedback. Um, they'll let me know any final touches that they want. Um, I'll go back, I'll adjust, and we go back and forth, uh, you know, till everyone is happy. Because when you're creating a commission piece, um, it's uh, making someone's uh, vision uh, come to life and adding your style and your energy into it. All right, so now that the client is happy, uh, you're done with your studio hours, make sure to do the happy dance, get some drinks, and for the last step, it's uh, delivering your artwork. So first of all, if you can do a portrait reveal, that's great because it creates excitement. Uh, make some noise for you, uh, but also one of the very important things is to uh, create a piece that lasts a lifetime. 
So uh, actually I forgot to mention that uh, when I search for the tools and the supplies for each of my projects, I want to ensure that they're all archival so that you know five years from now or a year from now it looks the same as when it was completed. Um, so you want to make sure to explain to your client how to take care of this artwork because if they take care of it, it will uh, last them. And also uh, for oil paints, uh, oil paint uh, most of the time will need to be sealed. So uh, when I paint, different colors have different uh, uh, finish to them. Some are more glossy, some are more matte. And for example, a black a lot of times will dry and uh, become so so dull that um, it will look more gray than than a black. Um, that is just necessary to uh, put a varnish that will uh, seal the work for a longevity, but also give the paint a cohesive look. And that is something that you can do after half a year to a year after finishing the painting. So yeah, so that's all the steps that I follow through right now. And uh, that is my process. Um, it's complex, but uh, I do create pretty big pieces. So um, this is kind of what helps me break it down to smaller steps and uh, you know, just make me feel like I'm achieving things on a daily basis and moving forward. As you see, there's many steps to creating an art piece and I have big goals for what I would want to achieve. And so pretty early on, I realized that uh, if I want to get to the point of realism uh, that I dream of, I have to pursue this full time. So um, a year ago, uh, I made that leap by opening my business and currently I work out of my studio from home where I create uh, commission portraits. Uh, my commission portraits uh, vary from something formal like military and corporate and to something more casual like kids and uh, even pets. So that's something that I really love and it's a lot of fun uh, because you get to put a smile on someone's face and uh, work together in collaboration to make their vision come to life through your style and skills. So I love that. And then for my second part, I also uh, have a passion of uh, sharing my knowledge. And so I teach, um, I teach online, one-on-one uh, -on -one in person, and also do workshops locally. And lastly, I'll uh, do gigs. Um, I love to branch out and try new things as long as it's representational and uh, uh, figurative subject matter. So for example, last weekend I did a big mural. That was a lot of fun. Um, also, I'm cura curating an art show, which is going to happen two years from now. So these are all the things that I do as an artist, along with marketing and uh, building my website and anything else that you have to do as a business. Again, guys, thank you so much for uh, tuning in and listening to this entire conversation. I really hope uh, you found something uh, useful, maybe entertaining. Um, I'm active on Instagram. I have an Instagram channel, um, so feel free to connect. Uh, I would love to hear any feedback or questions from you. And yeah, and uh, wishing you all the best. And uh, talk soon. Bye.